Welcome to Undialed. We got Mr. Scooter Brad. We got Corey Griff today. We're doing a video that I know you guys have asked. I get DMs about this all the time. I, don't know I actually you. get a lot of DMs being like, hey, how do you guys do this? Like, you guys do this a lot. Let us know. So today, Brad and I are going to do this. Will is currently in Phoenix, so he's not with us today. So me and Brad are going to give you some advice and help you guys out. And it's going to be a little bit easy. And we're going to give you some good advice and bad advice, some things your parents might not like. But at the end of the day, it is going to help. So Essentially, this is the undialed way how to travel with your scooter. Yep. And first, before we start the video, we have some big stuff coming. They're going to be up on the screen. If you can guess what it is, comment below. Let me know. It might be grip tape. It might be stickers. Or it might be both. I don't know. Maybe I just told you. Maybe I didn't. Let me know because it's going to be sick. And let your local shop know so they can cop some stuff. He low-key did just tell you. Yeah. <laughs> low-key. But... You spy ya. But you don't have to know. It doesn't matter. Tension! We have a ride day on Saturday the 24th of March at Escondido Sports Center in Escondido, California, baby. Which is in three days, boys. Thursday, Come Friday, through. Saturday. It's going to be a good time. Let's get right into this, Brad. Let's do it. So the easiest way that you want to travel with your scooter, whether or not you have a large enough suitcase to do it or not, is essentially just to pack it into your suitcase. That is usually what I do. I got my bag right here. This is my little soft sack ruckus. It's like a, uh, it's like a rucksack, but it's nice and soft. It's not a hard shell suitcase at all. And this bag is big enough to fit anywhere. Full height affinity bars, so 28 by about 26. Even I got the 858s in there, which come 26 wide. So pretty much like you want to grab all your stuff and just dump it in. I usually pack my clothes in first and then I put my scooter in afterwards just to see how much clothes I can fit into my I normally do it the other way. I like, really? I like stuff my scooter in first. Well, I don't really have a big enough suitcase anymore because it ripped. Airlines decided to rip off my handles. So that's sick. Yeah, well, I mean, I, maybe it's just because I have packed it so many times and I just know what fits. Yeah, fair if enough. If you got to take clothes off during the sequence and then put them all on top, I can kind of get down with that as well. So you got a deck. I have to take my bars off, obviously, but that's the only thing I have to deconstruct when I uh, put a scooter into my bag. So I've got a full bottom setup right now. This is a five by, is it 21 TSI? 20.5. So 20. 5 TSI, it is the shorter one, but a couple more inches aren't really gonna matter in a suitcase such as this one because it is quite long. I pretty much just take it, I shove it right inside my bag, I get shove it nice and deep like the head tube down the end beside my Oh, clothes. yeah, you like move okay, yeah, that and makes then sense. I literally just tuck it in like so, and bam, it's in my bag. I lie them the long way, but I kind of have to sit them on a bit of an angle, right? So I'm gonna put this like the first bar in and then the bottom, and then literally just push the front in, flip this up. Do I need to get a bag like this and zip it, dude? That's I'm it. Slacking. Check it in. They take it away. Finds you at the other end. You flip it out, put it together, and they you ride that out of the airport. Hell yeah. But here's the thing. You may be wondering, hey, Brad, Clayton, I can't get a big enough bag. Well, for you guys, if you guys followed our European trip, I hope you guys did. We made a bunch of videos. We did some skits and kind of vlogged along our way. We went to 23 countries around Europe and only took this bag. I'm gonna explain to you how we how we traveled briefly because there's obviously thousands of things that we did and things that went wrong. So as you can see, bars, deck, the deck goes in, but if you're, it actually barely goes in. It sticks out like that. And then the bars are way too wide. What I did is I just would put my bars like this. I mean, me and Will never really flew that much, mainly taking trains. So when you're on a train and a bus, you can literally just toss your scooter in and it doesn't even matter. But when you're flying, it's a huge pain because you, you can't have your bars like this on an airplane because they it's, take it so seriously yeah, like they'll consider your bars as a weapon they'll consider your tools as a weapon tools is another thing we need to mention too because tools if you have like a certain tool that's too long or it's a phillips head screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver if you have a craft knife like all those sorts of tools they can either get taken off you or even sometimes stop you from boarding a plane so. yeah so make sure all your tools are in your check-in bag which is the bag that is put under the plane whenever you're checking into the airport because if you don't it's just going to get taken off of you and you're going to really upset they're gonna be like oh are you trying to stab someone are you trying to kill someone you're like no i'm just trying to ride my scooter i swear i'm not <laughs> i'm actually trying to kill everyone but no seriously it, it's it's so annoying and the most annoying part about it normally when you fly an airline even if you fly okay so every single time every single time we flew the same exact airline would tell us something different so we would come on the first time they'd be like oh yeah you can take your scooter that's fine no big deal free of charge take it right on in they check it you're on your way so what we kind of figured out is it's not really based on the airline it's more based on the person that's working and how weird they feel about what's going on as long as you come up to them and you're very polite and you're very respectful and you're very confident and oh yeah i do this all the time blah 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 even if you've never done it before this is the thing that i was saying like your parents might not be 
too hyped on this, but basically you kind of have to lie a little bit. Basically every single time I go to the airport, I lie and say like, oh, I flew last week and they said this was fine. I took the same airline. They said it was fine. It's like one of those things where you pretty much just have to try your luck with the person that is like serving you at the airport. So if I always rock up to the airport, if I fly domestic, usually I'll try to just keep my scooter out of my bag. But if I fly international, I know that I just cannot be bothered dealing with anyone taking my scooter out. So I just leave it inside. But it's all about that person that you deal with at the front counter. Pretty yeah. Much. International flats are, they're way more strict. So it's a lot harder to take your scooter with you. And we'll get into more of the ways that you can do it. But this is more of like the scenario of you trying to just check your scooter in. So it's just easy and you don't have to deal with it. I swear, dude, I've been so mad before. When I went to Worlds last year, I almost got charged 220 euros to take my scooter, even though I didn't get charged at all leaving America. So when I left America, didn't get charged any. And they're like, oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can do that. You can gate check it. So I took my scooter through, gate checked it. Then on the way back, they're like, no, you're not allowed to take anything with you. Like everything has to be in your suitcase and I didn't have a big enough suitcase. It wasn't this one, but it was a big scene. I was like cussing at people. Watch your profanity. It was bad. It was really bad, but that goes back to saying every place is different. Every airport is different. Every country is different and it is very annoying. If you're flying out of LAX, you're normally fine. You just kind of have to convince them, you know, you just say like, oh yeah, I did this last week, blah, blah, blah. Be prepared to hear bad news and be ready. There's kind of like a generic rule too. So like if, if you want to get your scooter from A to B, no questions asked, put it in your suitcase. If you want to gate check it, usually you can get it done if you fly domestic or you could get it put in oversized baggage and you might not have to pay a fee if you fly domestic. But if you fly international, there's probably maybe a 20 to 30% chance that you will be able to gate check your scooter or put it in oversized without having to pay because usually on international, they're going to want to sting you as hard as they possibly can. So domestic, kind of easy. International, not so easy. I back that. So the ways that you can bring your scooter in is what we just talked about. There's checking and then there's gate check. Gate check is where you bring your scooter through security. They're normally very weird about it. They're like, does it fold? And you're like, no, it doesn't fold. And then they're like, wait, it doesn't fold. And then, they're, then they get really, really confused. I swear, if you've ever flown and traveled with your scooter, every single time they'll ask you if it folds. No, I, every time. I promise. There's not been once I haven't been asked that. No. And they're always just like, wait, what? They get so fold? weirded out by it too, huh? They're just like, what do yeah. you mean? What do you mean? It don't fold. Yeah. Like <laughs> I've literally told people like, oh, it, it doesn't fold. And they're like, it doesn't fold? And then they start pushing on. I'm like, go for it, bro. And then <laughs> they just like, it. they're just sitting there. Literally, there was this guy and he sat there, I swear, just like trying to like do this. And he just was looking at it. He just couldn't figure <laughs> it out. And he was just like pushing on as hard as he could. And he's like, oh, dude, what's wrong? I was like, it doesn't fold. Like, what do you mean? I'm man? telling you, it, it does not fold. And he's like, oh, wow, you're right. It doesn't fold. Really? It's I not didn't my know. scooter or anything. So there's gate checking. Gate checking normally works. If you live in America, if you take Southwest Airlines, you can gate check every single time. Southwest is normally very good about that kind of stuff. So if you guys fly in the United States, you're chilling. And don't fly United. Yeah, don't fly United. ripped off the plane. <laughs> Wait, what? You never heard about that? Uh-uh. Some dude got ripped off the plane on, Un on United. Surely you've seen it. Oh, he got like thrown out of the plane because they, they sold too many tickets. His ass got thrown out. <laughs> Shout out United. Hell, Hell yeah, United. You're killing it. The other way that you can take your scooter on an airplane is if you have a small scooter, your deck's cut down to 17, you have some small titanium bars, you take those bars off, throw on your block it through security, it'll go through the scanner just fine, and then whenever you get onto the plane, there's the overhead luggage, and you just toss up on the overhead luggage. I know Dakota Schutz does that. Every time he flies, that's just how he does it. So if you have a small scooter, you're chilling, but if you have a big scooter like Will and Brad over here, Corey over here in the distance. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. You might be kind of screwed. So just saying, if you guys want to travel and you do travel a lot, you want to take your scooter and you want to have no problems, check the bag and put your scooter in the bag. Literally get what Brad has. It's just a duffel bag. How much was that like? Get a duffel bag. Uh, I think I got this one at an op shop. It's an old snowboarding case. Like it doesn't fit a board in it, obviously, but it's like a whole wet weather thing. So if it gets wet, nothing inside your bag gets wet. And it's thick too. I can tell like it's been thrown around. It's, it's thick. It gets tossed. They treat it like trash. Sometimes my bars end up poking out of like the canvas because it's a really old bag. Like I said, got it at an op shop. But dude, it holds up. If you don't want something getting crushed, maybe get a hard shell. And uh, a lot of the kids out there watching, they, they could probably probably fit their scooter in a hard shell as long as yeah. you've got like not aftermarket affinity bars or anything like that you won't be able to get anything over maybe like 22 inches wide by maybe 24 high into a hard shell suitcase but you can get a lot of stuff into a soft duffel bag i'm telling you that i took two scooters in this bag home from australia plus a bunch of parts plus 
clothes plus camera equipment back from Australia one time. So I was chilling, get a duffel bag. There's three steps to traveling with your scooter. One, you check. If you don't want to do that, two, try gate check it. If that's not a possibility, you can either pay the fee or not take your scooter with you. And the fee can be ridiculous. Oh, it can be. It, literally, literally, we've said this the other day. We're like, what do you think about like people behind the counter just saying like, oh, I wanna, I bet I could get 250 bucks out of this kid for a scooter, I bet. And then the other dude's just like, go for it. Go yeah. For it. That's literally what I think happens at airports. I think they just like throw a random price at you and they're like, oh, pay this. Whenever me and Will left Portugal, the lady that was working at the airline told us that you're not allowed to get on the flight unless you get a paper printed and it's 15 euros to get it printed. And we were like, what? Like we have, we have our tickets on our phone. So I don't see what the big deal is. No, 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 no. It was 60 because we had to get two tickets each for both our flights. And so it was 60 euros. We go and pay that. And then Will's like, yo, dude, I'm just gonna put it in my pocket and we'll just like, go all go the way the through gate. with our phones. Yeah, like we'll just go through the, the gates and just see what happens. We went through all the gates without the pieces of paper. We just used our phone the entire time, got through. No one asked us anything. We didn't get any problems. No one, like literally, like we even asked, like, oh, yeah, do you need a paper? And they're like, do you have the app? Damn, yeah. they really scanned you for yeah. 60 euros. Yeah, huh? so like- That's what I'm saying. So, so here's the thing. Airports, it's literally just there to get money. Like they're trying to get everything out of you to get money. So make yeah. sure if they're doing something fishy, call the airline. I mean, they're there. You can complain. Complain. I'm telling you. Me and Will got a two-story apartment because we complained. Yep. Tell your parents and for yourself, if you've traveled by yourself, if something goes wrong with an airline you and it's complain. not your fault, complain. I am 100%. telling you. It's gonna save you. It it's gonna save you time. Gonna save you money. Don't let airlines scam you, cause that's all they're. That's literally what they're there to do. Is try to get as much money out of you as possible. You're the customer base, and the customer is always right. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope it helped you. If it didn't help you, leave a like down there and leave a comment explaining why it didn't help you and maybe something that's gone wrong with you. Tell us a little story. I'm actually really intrigued of some stuff that's happened to you guys. And if you guys want to know anything more about like traveling or you have any questions questions or stuff that we can make another video like this on leave those suggestions down in the comment section as well and me and Clayton maybe will maybe Corey we might jump in and make another video explaining one of those situations to you so leave those down in the comment section below and we'll get back to you with another video real soon hell yeah, hell yeah. all right thanks Brad for helping me out thanks Corey for sitting in the background you're a champ <laughs> all right guys thanks again subscribe bye Peace.